Hello and welcome once again to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. Um, I've already done a video showing the bones of the head using a real human skull, but this, I wanted to use this skull as well because I think on the video the coloration of this plastic skull will show up much better. So I'm going to go through all of the bones and major features once again. Um, for major bones that you can see on the top of the head, bones of the skull, this is the frontal bone, again it makes up your forehead. This is the left parietal bone. This is the right parietal bone. I turn the bone, after I turn the head to the side, again frontal bone, right parietal bone. This is right temporal bone. This is the right temporal bone. For the major features of the temporal bone, this is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. This is the external auditory meatus right external auditory meatus or right acoustic meatus. This is the mastoid process and this piece of bone pointing down is the styloid process. So that's the right temporal bone and its major features. Whoops, don't want to lose his jaw. This is the left temporal bone and the features are the same, it's just on the left side. I'm adding a little snippet in here because as I went back and looked at the video, I forgot to talk about the occipital bone. This is the occipital bone. It's on the back of the head. And the two features I have listed that you will need to know are the foramen magnum, this large hole in the occipital bone, and the occipital condyles. This is the right occipital condyle and this is the left occipital condyle. The occipital condyles um, articulate with the first cervical vertebrae. So occipital bone, foramen magnum, right and excuse me, right and left occipital condyles. Um, also notice if I pull off the skull cap, you can see the occipital bone on the inside of the skull. You can also see the temporal bone as it reaches to the inside of the skull. Interesting note, um, remember how the ear comes in here with the external auditory meatus or acoustic meatus. The apparatus for hearing and equilibrium are in this area of the temporal bone. They're embedded inside of the bone. Put the mandible back in place. Um, for the next bone, the parietal bones I already described. The ethmoid bone, I'll need to open up the skull. So we'll take the top off and have it face forward. <clears throat> the, ethmoid bone in, the ethmoid bone in this skull is colored red. So that's the part of the ethmoid bone that you can see from inside in the base of the skull. You can also see the ethmoid bone if you look inside of the nasal cavity. It has these three pieces of bone coming down. And that one in the center right on the top is the perpendicular plate. It makes up the very top of the nasal septum. The orange bone that's inside of here is the vomer. So that's the vomer bone. For the sphenoid bone, I'm going to turn him back this way again. Um, the most usual way of looking at the sphenoid bone is from this angle. And this yellow area here is all sphenoid bone. You can also see the sphenoid bone from out here. The yellow is sphenoid bone there. And you can see where it makes it through to the bottom of the skull. For the features um, of the sphenoid bone, the only one I have on my objectives right now is the cella tersica, this area here. It's a little indentation and it's where the pituitary gland rests. There's also a, l a lesser wing and a greater wing. And you have optic foramina here and over here where the optic nerves come through. But if those are not, if those last objectives I did are not on your objectives, then don't worry about it. Okay, moving on. Um, for the ethmoid bone, 
On the real skull, it's much easier to see the Christagalli and the cribriform plate. The orbital plate of the ethmoid bone in this skull is in red here. So it's inside the eye socket, and it's the part of the ethmoid bone that you can see inside of the eye socket. One thing to remember when looking at the real skulls, the bones here for the ethmoid plate, um, also the lacrimal bone, you know, basically the hole inside of the eye socket is very delicate. The bone is very thin, so be very careful when you're dealing with a real skull. Zygomatic bone is here in this kind of bluish color. That's the zygomatic bone. For features on the zygomatic bone, this is the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. And notice the temporal process of the zygomatic bone connects with the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. And together, they make the zygomatic arch. When I'm doing testing, I may put the sticker here. And if I put it here, then I want you to tell me this is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. If I put it in front of this suture line, then you should say the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. But if I put it on top of the suture, so you, you know I'm not distinctly asking for either one of those processes, that's when I'm asking for the zygomatic arch, if I put the sticker right over the suture. So that might help you on test day. The next bone is the maxilla. This is the left maxilla. This is the right maxilla. Again, the easiest way to remember maxilla is um, the maxilla. These are the bones that your upper teeth are embedded in, the maxillary bones. The palatine process of the maxillary bone is seen inside of the mouth, on the roof of the mouth. So it's the part of the maxilla that makes up the roof of the mouth. That's the palatine process. The next bone are palatine bones, and they are right here. So you just need to know palatine bone for both of them. Next is the lacrimal bone. It's seen inside of the eye socket. In this model, it's green lacrimal bone. The lacrimal fossa is this indentation that's here on the lacrimal bone. And then below it is the lacrimal foramen and I believe yeah in this colorized skull it's a it's a small hole so I can't fit my instrument down through it but you might be able to see there's a hole going down through into the nasal cavity. So that again is lacrimal bone. Nasal bones. This is the left nasal bone, and this is the right nasal bone. They're relatively small bones that make up part of your nose. The rest of your nose is all cartilage. The mandible is the jaw bone here. And the only feature that I have listed on my objectives right now is the mental foramen which are the holes here and over on this side, mental foramen. Um, temporomandibular joint, that is this joint here between the mandible and the temporal bone. Notice that the joints are usually named for the bones, temporomandibular joint. So it's a connection between the mandible and the temporal bone. And zygomatic arch I already did. For sutures, let me put the top back on. Whoops, sorry. Looking at the head head on and then bringing it down. This is the frontal bone once again and these are parietal bones. The suture between the frontal bone and the parietal bones is called the coronal suture. The sagittal suture is between the parietal bones, sagittal suture, 
coronal suture. And then if we look to the back of the head, this is the lambdoidal suture. If I turn it this way, you can kind of see how it makes a kind of a lambda. The last suture that we have um, to cover is the squamosal suture, and the squamosal suture is between the parietal bone and the temporal bone. This is the squamosal suture. And for the adult skull, I think that's all of the features that we have, to, or all the bones and the features that we have to know for the skull. Again, any questions? Email, phone me. Um, and thanks once again for watching.